Law Warrior Armor. The Zoya Light Tank. Overview. Named for a Slavic warrior goddess, the Zoria is the most common armoured vehicle used by the clans. Comprised of readily available parts, it's inexpensive to manufacture, and its simple control systems make it easy for crews to learn to operate the vehicle. Capabilities One of the few clan fighting vehicles to use an ICE engine, the Zoya is slower than many of its peers, with a top speed of only 65 kph. Because this vehicle is intended to be used in static positions, as indicated by its armour configuration, its speed is rarely an issue. The front hull and turret carry almost double the armour of the side and rear facings, but this armour is conventionally fought rather than using ferrofibrous techniques, making it 20% less effective than it could be. A sophisticated ECM suite however does adequately supplement the armour by degrading the performance of enemy fire control and sensor systems. Compared to other clan vehicles of its tonnage, the Zoya mounts a large crew, requiring a driver, gunner and commander. The division of labour between the crew members, however, also allows soldiers to operate most systems in the vehicle with minimal training. Save for the lock-in harness and narrow vision slit, the driving position is little different than that in a standard ground car. The gunner's position is located behind the driver and controls the turret and the vehicle's weapon systems. Equipped with a 360 degree vision strip, the gunner simply aligns the crosshairs to each weapon system on the target and depresses the firing stud. The commander, who serves as sensor, communications and electronic warfare officer, can also designate a target on his console for the gunner, which is then highlighted on the gunnery screen. The Zoya's primary weapon is a 40mm LBX series autocannon. Capable of firing solid and cluster munitions, the weapon is devastatingly effective against armour and infantry units. The Zoya carries 40 rounds of ammo for the main gun, divided between two bins. Most Zoyas carry an equal mix of solid and cluster rounds. A 10-tube LRM rack provides additional firepower, but small ammunition bins limit the launcher's endurance and its versatility. An Artemis fire control system slaved to the LRM launcher has improved the number of missiles that strike the intended target, but some clans have removed this device in favour of an extra ton of ammunition. Deployment All clans used the Zoya. Clans Blood Spirit and Cloud Cobra initially deployed the largest number, though many of the Blood Spirit Zoyas have been destroyed when they intervened in the Star Adder Barak Trial of Absorption and have yet to be replaced. Clan Wolf recently has begun to make extensive use of Zoyas because of their easy-to-learn controls to repopulate their garrison ranks. Forced to acknowledge the weakened condition of his military following the invasion of the Inner Sphere and the refusal war subsequently, Khan Vladward has taken the desperate step of recruiting members of the non-warrior castes through trials of position to crew these Zoyas and other vehicles. So basically the Inner Sphere Vedette, I, uh, sorry, the Inner Sphere, the Clan Vedette, essentially. It's another 35-ton vehicle, this one being tracked. It has a power plant that's an ICE-140. Its cruise speed is 43, and its flank speed is 65. Its armor is forging OTR-17B. Its armament is a Type 1 Type OVR-X LB-5 autocannon with one Type 10 short bow LRM-10 launcher with Artemis fire control. Manufactured by various clans, its communication system is the consolidated BMR-6C, and its targeting and tracking is the TRTTS Mark II, with Artemis fire control. All this translates into a tank that moves 4 and 6, I think that's actually the same speed as the Vedette. Uh, it has 15 armour on the front, 9 on the sides, 9 on the rear, and 14 on the turret. Its ammo is located in the body, with the LB-5 being located in the turret, as you can see from the artwork, and the LRM-10 is kind of wrapped around it over on the top, as you can see, with 12 rounds of ammunition in the body. It also has the, LR uh, sorry, the ECM equipment located there as well. It's, it is a, it's a very unique uh, vehicle. It's almost like it's a tracked vehicle that's dragging a gun behind it. It almost seems like it was built with the idea that you could detach the rear compartment, let's call it, or the rear module, and attach a different weapons module to it. So you could have like a you know an SRM module or an LRM only module, or one that has a bigger auto cannon that sacrifices the missile launcher, or one that comes with a, a brace of lasers. And now I'm just coming up with an idea for a whole different set of vehicles. But it looks like that, doesn't it? It looks like it's got this this ability to remove the back section. So really the vehicle is the Zoya, uh, I don't know, like the Zoya armoured vehicle with 
whatever the weapon attachment is. I, I don't know now. Looking at the artwork, I don't know if, the, if, if this was intentional or, or that was the original idea, but they changed their mind. But god damn, what a, what a cool idea that would have been uh, to sort of take the idea of the Omnipod technology of a mech, but adapting it as a vehicle type thing. Uh, so instead, you've got this kind of Omni tank that can switch up depending on the, obviously, the, the environment it's going to be going into. Urban combat, long range combat, you know, is going through dense forests or uh, tracking across, you know, um, very like large wastelands that might be racked with storms or like, like sandstorms or blizzards, that kind of thing. All these different ideas of like environment, environmental types that this vehicle could be used for that bring different types of equipment uh, based on its mission. Yeah, ah, oh, fuck, that'd be really good. <laughs> hmm. Overall, I don't dislike it. I, I, I love the little visual style of it. it it's if not if, if anything else, it, it for some reason it makes me think it's like some kind of lawnmower. Is the other idea is that the back thing just looks like you're cutting grass and shooting people at the same time. Um, again, it, it's. In, entirely distinct from anything else in the inner sphere. I as I said I like the idea that this is basically the the clan vedette. It's so common amongst every single clan out there that every PGC probably has dozens of these things as part of their force. It's not too particularly well armored that it's it's easy enough to knock out, but it's got a good punch to it. An LB5 and LRM10 is not a bad combination of weaponry for a light tank. Uh, certainly gives it the ability to harass at range. You can imagine a, a star of these things being quite effective, uh, especially against like a, a even light clan max, uh, for instance, if uh, if it was engaging that kind of force. But against it in sphere troops, uh, a lance of uh, max having to come up against a, a star of Zoyas would be yeah quite a quite a challenge. Uh, certainly uh, enough that they would probably get some good hits in. On the on the max before they got knocked out or too badly damaged that they would have to retreat. So yeah, it's not bad. I, I don't dislike the vehicle. Um, certainly unique, and that's one of the more interesting parts. And again, we're mentioning more about how the different clans are their outlooks on using vehicles and what's been happening with, especially with the invading clans with Wolf at this you know around this period of trying to reinvigorate the forces patch up the, the the holes in the lines kind of thing of just you know in desperation moves for for wolf putting more people who aren't warriors into vehicles just to try and you know give at least give the semblance of a fighting force that can still take on all comers but you know they're hanging on by a thread so yeah interesting vehicle i like it so um we'll wrap it up there thank you all as always i'll see you next time have a good one bye bye